for the first speak, we're doing something a little bit different. So Steen is going to interview Vale for us and talk about, um, <laughs> talk about, uh, all right, Steen, you have the stage. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hello. Uh, unaccustomed as I am to public speaking. <laughs> so for anyone who doesn't know, this is Vale of Research Publications. Ryan, can we? And Vale has been documenting, studiously documenting the counterculture since, what, the 70s? 1977. 1977. If you need to know anything about punk rock or industrial or anything that is counter to the norm, Vale is your man. Uh, woo. And among other things, um, the research publication has put out two volumes of books on pranks. So the first pranks book came out in 1988, right? Or 87. 87, OK. Um, and for anyone who hasn't seen it, first of all, it's available at the merch table. Uh, uh, <laughs> media! media. Uh, um, uh, but it is a documentation of uh, mostly interviews with various pranksters over history, right? Um, why did you decide to publish it then? What was the, the cultural overview? That wh why a book on pranks? You've done a lot of work with punk and, and other subcultures. Why pranks? How does that fit in? Actually, I started publishing June 77 with Search and Destroy, and it seems like with the very first issue, people were telling me pranks. And it, I'm so dense, it took me years to figure out that is a theme. And I invented the phrase, pranks should be done by all just like poetry should be done by all, which I ripped off. <laughs> <laughs> who, who did you rip that off from? It was Lotre Amont, the, sh the Chants de Maldoror and the Poesies, <laughs> ah. you know, 1870, the TMI. Right, okay. <laughs> um, so was there a particular, like, uh, cultural thread that underlied everything. Like you, you were in, working in the Bay Area at the time. Who were some of the Bay Area pranksters? Well, my favorite uh, that turned me on to the very notion and idea of billboard pranking was Mark Pauline, Survival Research Labs founder, Media. <laughs> And, and in, uh, it's in the Pranks book, but I, January 25th, 1979, he climbed 100 feet in the air and did this massive billboard uh, modification of black velvet whiskey or something. It was, oh, feel the velvet. Well, he changed it to feel the pain. <laughs> and Telly Savalas' mouth was filled with a bunch of grotesque teeth. But... <laughs> Anyway, that was like a big hit for me in my head. Nice. Um, does the Bay Area have a lot of tradition of pranksters? Because I have the feeling, like I feel like a lot of the uh, interviews in the first book at least were Bay Area people. Well, sure, of course. I mean, if you're, John Law's here and he'll, he was saying earlier like, wait, I don't know if I want to be known as a prankster. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, you're walking a fine line because, you know, you want to be able to survive in this town. But, yes, there, there have been a lot of pranks here, but I have a bad sense of humor. I think I recently wrote a little essay about how uh, maybe... Uh, oh, I, oh, have you ever been to a party where you got fined if for the first person who mentioned you know, the orange, whatever he's called, <laughs> cheat. <laughs> uh, yes, media, right. 
Anyway, oh yeah, John Law is the one-man um, prank movement, you could say. <laughs> because in my Pranks Volume 2 book, which if, there's only one copy left, um, he's interviewed three times under three different names. <laughs> So for the second volume, when did the second volume come out? 2005. Um, what was the, what did you see in the uh, differences culturally between the first volume and the second volume? Uh, guess what, the, the, what, the thousand pound elephant in the room? The internet, mm. social media. media. You guys are on, good. Computers. There was a time when nobody had a computer. It wasn't that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how did that change the, the way that pranks are done? Like, how did the internet change that? Well, the, you could then get away with more or less, I think 90% I think of the internet is actually is pranks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it actually is what you call disinformation or what do they, what do they call it, fake news? Or, <laughs> It's all fake, actually. <laughs> and um, so, I don't know. You, you can do all kinds of things very convincingly on the internet, and it becomes a meme, and then it'll reach, you know, 50 million people. But, but then it, if it is a hoax, that doesn't get any meme, what do you call it, meme, meme, meme what? Meme magic, okay. <laughs> Me, by meme-spirited people, ha-ha. Uh, <laughs> too soon, too soon. <laughs> okay. So, um, I, I feel like in the first book, there's a lot more, in the earlier stuff, pre-internet, there's a lot more emphasis on physical pranking. Um, yeah, we used to have bodies. <laughs> <laughs> You know, everyone is so virtual now. Th th I said this should be a, a Egyptian hieroglyph. People walking around like this, <laughs> you know. Anyway, well, you guys are the exception. There must be a, a revolt against this, or you wouldn't be here. You hear that? Veil vale thinks you're cool. <laughs> I, I've, I, I've, well, I, I, I've actually observed people apparently meeting each other for the first time and talking. <laughs> In, in what you call meat space, I hate that word, M-E-A-T. <laughs> um, but I approve of it. So, with the virtualization and all that stuff, um, wh what do you think, here's the easy question, what do you think pranking looks like today? Like, what are the next steps for somebody who wants to, you know, b be the next, you know, Billboard Liberation Front, or, sorry, the next John Law, sorry or whatever you want to, to do, what do you do today? Well, you have a Twitter account, like, <laughs> and guess what? We are bring, being pranked a lot, whether we know it or not. Mm, that's true. That rhymes. <laughs> okay. So what's the difference then between, um, is that a real prank though? Is that in the real spirit of the original pranksters? Well, I tried to lay out in my pranks book in the introduction, like, why, what is a real prank of gravitas or substance? And I say, okay, it must have a poetic metaphor dimension. It ought to be anti-authority, anti-authoritarian in some way. And um, I don't know, it should also have some, some, some deep emotional, I don't know, whatever you call it, <laughs> where, the, where you're a fish and you're hooked very deeply. Mm. Gravitas, yeah. Well, gravitas, as you said, yeah. yeah. But more than that, okay. Um. Hey, how do we end with a laugh? Yeah, after the, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to figure that out. Uh. So what's, um, other than the, the Telly Savalas billboard, uh, what would be, so I know your favorite prank from the first book. What's your favorite prank from the second book? I have to admit, I haven't read the second book yet. So uh, what's, what's your favorite? Well, there's a guy named Frank Discussion. And he was one of the first people I knew who 
who got a real driver's license with a fake name. I mean, Frank Discussion, get it? <laughs> and, and he's one of the funniest guys I've ever met. He's in both Pranks books. He's in Search and Destroy number 10, which they're all there. And he, he, he showed, in the second Pranks book, he showed a, a book he'd written, which of course was fake. <laughs> and, it was, and it was called Sabotage for Dummies. <laughs> Okay. Um, I think I, I we're, think we're done. done. You gotta... They want us out of here. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah.